Hey. What's up, guys? Hopefully you guys can hear me. Can you guys hear me? Uh, uh, let's see who's here. Nick, Nick Zarvis, Incom Incompass Photography, Blake's Guitar, Dan P, Andrew, uh, some crazy last name, Ryan Saunders, RS Meg, CRC, Gabriel N. What's up, guys? Ron Casey. Look at that. That's Ron Casey. A great drummer. Um, Stephen Van Bellingen. Bellingen? Bellingen? Kyle Baffy. Sixton. Wow, we can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, baby, I missed you. Wow, okay. Whatever. That's weird. Uh, somebody's, got, somebody's got jokes. Mirak, what do you say to the musician playing the triangle in the orchestra? Thank you for everything. Whoa. Uh, what's up, Dean? Not much. We're hanging out here tonight with our good buddy Malcolm Pugh from uh, In Fury, the Artisan Era. Oh, whoops. Nightbot is talking about Food Banks Canada. <laughs> uh, nope. No, no, let's get away from the Food Banks Canada. That was a long time ago. And of course, um, well, that's just going to keep happening. <laughs> oh, you know what? Let's do this. Let's get right in, right in Nightbot. Hey, but hey, go give to Food Banks Canada. Like, don't give me a, like, don't get me wrong here. Don't, I almost said don't give me a break, which, give me a break. Cheers from Norway. Johnny Falcon. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Spread some love this Christmas. I do have to say, though, on that topic, we had a great fundraising stream uh, late 2020. Oh, my God. It was amazing. Oh, this music is very good. Okay. Well, I've kept uh, Malcolm waiting for long enough. We're going to invite Malcolm Pugh on to Zoom here. Nightbot, you're fired. Uh, and he's going to come and hang out. We're going to listen to some, some death metal. And, I mean, like, that's fine. And everything is going to be fine and great. Um, Cliff Sharp, what's up, buddy? Because I'm Justin, punched a hole in the wall because I'm not Dean Lamb, good on guitar. Jeez. Look out for your walls, everybody. Don't punch the walls. Okay. Uh, and I've copied something else, and so of course now I have to recopy the invite link because that's how organized I am. All right. We're going to say hi to Malcolm Pugh here in just a moment. And... I don't know when. At some point. I Look at that. And Malcolm Pugh, uh, hey. What up? Hey, man. Uh, look at this. Hey, look at this whole thing I got going on. I got cool stuff. You're here. You're cool stuff. I don't know if you're, st you're not like an inanimate not object. Stuff. You're not stuff. No, but, but someone did call me beard face. And... Is that true? That's pretty sick, dude. Oh, really? Well, you do have a beard on your face, and I'm... I like it, dude. Uh, I'm talking to you, and I'm also moving stuff around, because this is the first time I've done a Zoom interview on here. And look at this. You know what, Malcolm? You and I have to first... We have to, you know, tell everyone that this stream is sponsored by our friends over at SheetHappensPublishing.com. Now... You know, that's right. Now, Malcolm, when, when we think about SheetHappensPublishing.com, First off, obviously, code word Dean for 15% off a checkout, obviously. That comes to <laughs> mind. But, like, obviously, that's that goes without saying. But secondarily, um, you got my dumb band, Archspire. We have two albums on there, soon to maybe be a third. Um, oh, yeah. We've got um, Pliny. We've got Periphery. We've got Protest the Hero. And we have, we have a little bit of revocation. Uh, I'm going to turn you up one second. Yeah, turn me up, dude. Uh, and uh, and and we have a little bit of your band, and your band is called a bit. Inferi, dude. Inferi, that's great. Well, you are in lots that's of right. lots and lots of bands. And so, speaking of Inferi, let's crack yeah. some Inferi because we're here uh, chilling out, and we're gonna turn on a new track that you just came out with called Mesmeric. How do you pronounce it? Mesmeric. Mesmeric horror. Mesmeric horror. Okay. Well, yeah. we're gonna go for it, and I have ooh. Ooh, the mute, the mood drops when that. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, he's in like ten bands. Kyle Baffy says you're in ten bands. That's true. Um, the mood has dropped, and uh, and I'm excited to listen to this track. I've listened to it a couple of times. You were sending me 
some like test stuff from right. the music video before it was finished. Um, now, for anybody who hasn't seen the music video, uh, it's great. I would I would describe it as a, um, a you know I'm gonna how would you describe the music video? Um, it's kind of a like a homage to like old '80s flicks, but like in a cartoon format, mm -hmm. cartoon like anime like inspired. Um, Almost Death Clock. A lot of people have said Death Clock, but that was not in mind. But it's it's kind of there. I, I did kind of think of that when I was watching it. The, the the art style is not quite the same, but it's like kind of got that vibe. But I do have to say one thing, um, and I'm going to say this because this is it makes me jealous. Yeah. Um, when you make cartoon versions of yourself, you can yeah. make yourself look ripped as fuck, and <laughs> all your all your dudes look ripped like big strong dude. like was that on purpose that was not on purpose that was uh how the artists saw us you know? okay. they, they saw us and they're okay. like whoa dude these guys are buff let's uh is that true it up. um i mean they drew it we didn't request it that's true um we yeah. did approve the artist um <clears throat> the character design okay um oh, okay well so, there you go you know it was like oh th this looks perfect yeah after some revisions so, so roll with it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, yeah somebody saying Arch Spire's vocalist sounds like Nathan Explosion. I have heard that so many times, and I don't, I don't, I don't see that. At I don't see that at all. I don't, I don't really. I, explosion, I, explosion. Yeah, I, I, I really, I, I don't know who Nathan Explosion sounds like. Chris Barnes. What? Oh, really? Kind of. N more than back in more the than day. <laughs> back in the day. Uh, uh, eh. Okay. There we go. <laughs> I'll shut up. <laughs> uh, Fadjin saying the video is sick. I want uh, like a feature length. I guess a feature length video. Would you ever consider doing a feature length video for the band in a comic book style? Oh, yeah. If we had like uh, $100,000. $100,000. That shit is expensive. That's true. Um, what was the, uh, what was the pro process like when you were like getting cartoons drafted up? Did you? Yeah. So you said you approved the, the drawings, but did right. you like sketch anything yourself, or was it just like here's pictures, no. go for it? Yeah, we uh, they uh had some some story ideas, and uh, I wrote up a story idea that we ended up going with, mm -hmm. and then once that happened, uh, they sent us some character designs for us, and like um, background designs, mm -hmm. and um, the only thing I I really had to do with any of that. As far as like the design is like, I made um, some posters out of like our album art and some other you know, uh, mer merch yeah. designs just to like have in the marquee, so it like kind of um, you know was like more meta in that way. Right. Yeah. I, I like stuff like that, like little like yeah. Easter eggs and stuff like that. You know, right. it's uh, it's cool because you can you can sort of think about your your band kind of like like when you put out content as a band, you can sort of think about each content like its own song even if it's like a music video right. or whatever like because your band is anybody in the chat doesn't know that in theory and honestly all of the bands that you're in but in theory in my opinion kind of the most is very dense musically right and so when you add all those like little things just keep adding and adding and adding um it becomes like it becomes like a fun thing at least for for me to listen to like a, as, as a musician you hear stuff that you didn't hear before and, and like the, the album is renewed every time you listen to it and, and you yeah. can go five years in um, and still be hearing cool stuff. Yeah, it's like DLC for a video game. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. like you can play it and play it and then, you know, they drop the DLC, which is your ears actually figuring out what the fuck's happening. Yeah. And you're like, oh, cool. I got a new song to listen to now. Like I hear a new harmony that was like, you know. What do you... Um, what kind of standard do you hold yourself to live? Are are you like, because I mean, you and I have toured together a couple times. Yeah. We've done oh three times. Yeah. Damn. Three times. Fuck, that feels like a long time ago. It does. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, uh, yeah, man. Uh, but, but we toured together lots. Um, we toured together in 2017, I think, or 2018 with Obscura. 2018. With Obscura. 2020. Yeah, Obscura. Or not 2020. Obscura Beyond Creation. Uh, us, you guys. Um, Sorry, I can't. Somebody else. Um, Beyond Creation and uh, it was a great tour. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we did a, a tech trek through the states. Um, we were headlining, and you guys were uh, with us with Vervum and Wormhole, which was a great tour. Right. 
And right. then we did um, we did Europe in 2019. Yeah. And that was crazy good. Was that the same year? Yes. I think so. Wow. Dude. Yeah. Okay. Crazy. Uh, Astral Guitar saw both of you guys in ATX with Obscura. ATX. Is that uh, Atlanta? Texas? Atlanta? Uh, Austin? Uh, ATX. ATX? That has to be Austin, Texas, right? It's got to be Austin, Texas. Um yeah, that that was great. But when you play live, are you holding yourself up to that kind of like, like, minuscule, like tiny inflections on your guitar, or or are you like trying to recreate the album? Or are you just kind of like, nah, you got the album, and then you've got the live thing, and they're separate for you? Um, kind of a, a mixture of both. Like, I used to be really bad at like making one mistake and it like ruining my night. Right. Um, and I have like weird anxiety issues no matter what the situation is when it comes to live playing so mm. um do you really yeah so whenever i fuck up i either like like start to shut down if i like really like start to like fester about it mm -hmm. so then it kind of like hinders my my performance and like how i like you know I'm, like trying to be slightly entertaining and not just right. like standing there and concentrating so if i if i fuck up and um and start thinking about it then i'll start to like be robotic right so i'm just trying to be up there having fun you know if, if i fuck up then you know i've you got get up here and do it I, <laughs> <laughs> i've got a funny story um yeah. that involves you guys um and a show that yeah. we played in salt lake city together oh uh. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. uh, i don't know if that's something that you want out there oh yeah go for it go for well, it well okay salt lake city is notorious anybody that's in the chat right now or anybody who's watching this later it's like Salt Lake City is kind of notoriously kind of dead. We we have fun there because you know, right? Well, I mean, my band played there 2013, 2012 for the first time or whatever, and it was right. like no one went to the show. Like no one was right. there at the show. Which, when you have a, a show that nobody attends, it's not really the most uh, motivating thing. So we kept going back, right. and every time we go back, there's a little bit more. Sometimes there's a little bit less, but then they come back, and you know, the next year it's actually kind of good and. And so we all had sort of like this still kind of mediocre expectation for that show. Right. So what you guys did the night before, um, I don't actually remember what happened too much, but I do remember that everybody was expecting the show to suck right. and to be very dead and poorly attended. But yeah. then it turns out that it was a, kind of a small venue and it was fucking jam-packed. Yeah, it was sick. And what did you guys do? Because you <laughs> thought hey no one's gonna be there all good let's right. just take it easy let's right. relax and maybe partake what did you right. i don't what did you guys do um i i drank a half a bottle of whiskey okay. before the show okay. Um, okay. Okay. And okay i didn't realize it i was just hanging out and i was right. like oh no oh that, we're playing now that is a lot oh no yeah you you are you, know? you are a big dude you're seven foot six yeah, yeah seven foot yeah, nine seven foot nine i'm, you're, I'm like as big as shack you're big you're a big dude um yeah. Half a bottle is, I mean, that would put, I would mean, I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't, I wouldn't remember the show. I wouldn't remember right. the day if I had that much. Um, it was, it, it was rough. <laughs> so not only did you do that, but the guys in your band, uh, they did mushrooms. Is that what it was? It was, uh, it was Mr. Andrew Kim. Okay. <laughs> Don't let us parents hear this podcast. Um, yeah. Oh, Steve, Stevie's here. You know, we Andrew Kim and I took some mushrooms that day. A little laughy face. <laughs> oh, well, Stevie. Yeah. Okay, we'll see. Yeah. We all just fucked up, you know? <laughs> you were all just living like it was 1984. Right, 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 like right, right, right. Like, like we were in Motley Crue. Yeah. And, um, that and was then funny. something happened. Like, during that show, uh, I think some of the dudes from Wormhole came up and then, like, like hit a pedal on my amp. So right. then it cut out, so I started freaking out. <laughs> and then uh, yeah, I, I just ended up passing out in the van after the show. I was just like, I'm such an idiot. I'll, I'll never do this again. Now, is that and, uh, is that like a is that like a scar on your touring past, or is that something you can move you can move through and be like, you know what? I'm that was me then. I'm me now. Yeah. I don't need to think about. Or do you find yourself waking up at night being like, oh fuck, I can't believe I did that. Uh, now it's funny. Now it's know? funny. I survived it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Um, it's just like one of those things where like. You know, you just, you, you, you misjudge the situation. <laughs> <laughs> and you come back on the other side alive. Yeah, and, uh, right, right. 
right. Um, yeah, the, I think the closest. I, I I don't drink very much um, personally, and I, I don't you know it, it, especially before a show. Like I might have a beer or two after right. a show, but I think the most I ever really. Yeah, I mean, even on stage, if I have a few, if I have a few sips of a beer, I can f- like something about the stage energy and like the right. the adrenaline that you're getting. I, it just like. It like accelerates it for me, and it makes me feel like effects of booze like way faster. You know what I mean? I don't. Maybe it, uh, it's all it mental. It for me. But oh, really? Yeah, like like, like a couple of beers before the show. Mm-hmm. It just kind of like loosens me up. Then I can you know be a little bit like more outside of myself, as opposed to being like um, right. You know, super anxious and. Have you always had that? Yeah. yeah. It's, Ang- it's always been a thing. Musical anxiety or just general anxiety? Just in general, like, oh, yeah, you yeah. Know, going in front of the class, like, reading a report or something. Well, know? I mean, I hate to say it, but we've got 237 people watching. Are you nervous right now? Oh, no, that, that doesn't matter. <laughs> no, no. They're, they're robots. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not to stress you out. No, but it's... Uh, but these are people no, that... that these are These are people that are that are here to hang out. And they're, they're stoked. They yeah, that's here, what's up. You know, um... But yeah, I mean, the most I ever really did on stage in terms of like totally just embarrassing, lots of people are saying beep boop in the chat right now, um, beep, as beep, if beep. they're robots. So the most I ever really right, did right. In, in terms of like embarrassing myself, we were playing uh, a show in Perth and it was the last show of a tour of like 10 shows in Australia and New Zealand. And so like it was like flights every single day at like four or five in the morning. Right. And it fucking was tiring. And so like the last show... Um, it was kind of like the night before you pack up and you f- and you go to the hotel at three, right? At two a.m. Yep. or whatever. After you're done, you know, we were with Psychroptic, so they were headlining. So you pack up, get to the hotel at two or three, and then you have to be at the lobby at four for the flight to the next show. And that was every single right. day, pretty much. So like, That's I right. wanted to die. Like, I mean, I you yeah. sleeping in a lot of airports, not getting any sleep, barely sleeping on the plane. I you know, they're yeah. short flights too like three hours max like they're not they're right, not get sleep on a flight fun flights right um so we're playing perth and i remember like it was a pretty small stage and i was playing a riff like sort of like this heavy head bangy riff and i go to head bang and i just straight up fall <laughs> over like face first into the <laughs> monitor a studio the, the speaker on the stage hands my hands come off of my guitar fa- like hands out to the stage wow and I just yeah. like I bailed, and no, I I like got back up, and I'm like, okay, I'll just like you know, I, I'll look around for a second, I'll make sure that, and I don't think anybody fucking noticed, and that made <laughs> me realize that like no one right. is looking, you know what I mean? Like no one right. gives a fuck, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, it, sometimes they do, but for the most part, you're up on stage and you're like right. thinking, okay, I got to do this, I got to do this. And then you realize that pretty much everybody else in the room is also thinking the same thing about themselves. Right. And they're yeah. not, you know, it's like... And a fraction of the people are, are watching you at one time anyway. You yeah. Know? Like, not everybody's watching you at one point, and then they, you know, they go to Ollie, then they go to Jared. You think that the, you, know, you, th- you think that's a guitar player thing, or you think that's just like any musician sort of has that? Everybody's watching I would you imagine, right now, you know. I would imagine anybody in front of a large group of people. Right. You know, they're just like, I exist, and all these people are facing this way. <laughs> you know right, what I mean? Right, yeah. So it's like only natural to be like, well, they can all see me. Right. What's yeah. um, What's the biggest show you ever played? Uh, I think that was with, uh, when I was in Entheos, we played a show in LA that sold out. Oh, yeah. It's like 1,200 people or something like that. That's sweet. It was like a... That's so Black sick. Dahlia and Go Horror Tour. It was pretty crazy. Man. But the funny thing about that story is we start the set and the sound guy had the guitar shut down. Like, like, like the volume music. down. So I'm just like going ham. Right. And there's no guitar. Great. And I can hear it in my in-ears and everyone's like, no. <laughs> and, and that was the moment yeah. uh, where I was just pissed the rest of the night. Right. <laughs> Something sets you off. And it's you, like, how did this happen? And what you, is going on here? You just take it out on your bassist, Andrew. You just pummel him. You just take oh, it no, no. out on him. Right? <laughs> that's. I mean, that's no, what that's I, that. he, he's a little guy. I mean, like, he's, he's you know, just look over and just start wailing. That's what I would imagine you would do. I would never do that personally. I wouldn't but do if, that. If Andrew, if, if Andrew was in that, yeah. But, 
you know, right. uh, Evan Bruiser's kind of scary. Oh yeah, right. You weren't even you weren't even playing uh, with Infury, right? No, no, no. Right, right. right. Um, well, anyway, when you did get home, huge. when you go, when you got back to Denver next time you saw him, you did end up home like right, that, right. though, right? I did. Okay, that's the first thing I did. Great. I just punched okay, him. Okay, great. Yeah, that's like uh, my go-to thing is just yeah. uh, punching uh, Andrew on tour. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, especially. Master J, thanks for that uh, ten dollars super chat. Um, were you guys nervous for the hot dog destroyer show? Ethan, uh, Ethan Andrew says, "Do you know what oh, in gosh. the fuck he is talking about?" Yeah. So, uh, on the Allegiant tour, we played Halloween in some place called Milk Boy. <laughs> was it the, the venue? The venue or? was called oh, Milk Boy. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and it was such a stressful show to like load into. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't have any parking for us, and we had to go up like flights of stairs that were like two and a half feet wide, right. with like racks and all this stuff. And the right. stage was small, and uh, and the dressing room was all the way downstairs. So we had to like go through the restaurant with with hot dog suits on because it was Halloween. Right. And we played the set in hot dog suits, and it was smoldering. And whose idea was the hot dog suits? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it wasn't mine, uh, oh <laughs> but it was kind of like okay. Here's one one last hot dog gag, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, the the show was fun. I wasn't nervous about it. It was just more. It was so stressful, right? Of a of a show, and yeah. we had to like park like you know, eight thousand miles away, and right? Then, like walk, and then like with like all the stuff, mm-hmm. and so you know. It's just uh, sometimes shows like that you can't even think about being um, nervous because like yeah. all of your soul has been sucked out. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> you just have to give it. The I don't rest remember of your the last soul. time I got my entire soul sucked out on tour, but um, the uh, yeah. <laughs> that was a blowjob joke. So the um, the uh, yeah the, the stress that you feel on stage, I I, I know because you, you're mentioning like the the load in, you know. Right. The load in is rough. Or I feel like that's right. pretty much the only thing I get stressed out about now is technical shit. Well, no, right. no, it's not good because it makes you just not. You're not <laughs> in the moment. You know what I mean? Like, right. So we played yeah. we played Hellfest 2019, and that was the biggest show we've ever played by uh, an order of ten. You know what I mean? Like, like thousands like, and thousands of people there. It was like twelve thousand yeah. people. Like it was like insanity, yeah, was right? So. Right. Um, <clears throat> So uh, thanks, Sean Packer, for that super chat. Um, yeah, so it was insanity. And all I could think about, I mean, there was moments of, oh, man, this is so awesome, where there's like right. a, a mosh pit so big that <laughs> yeah. there's like people standing still in the middle of it. You know, what I mean? it's like a to circle. Do yeah, and there's like yeah. a good chunk of people in the middle of like this circle yeah. pit. And you're just like, like, that's, it's so cool to be playing a right. show and be like something I'm doing is making that happen. Man, that's like coolest right. fucking feeling. But for the most part during that show, I'm thinking, how are we getting stuff off the stage? Does it sound okay? You know, are right. my in-ears going to keep connectivity the entire time? Is there going to be interference? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, just it's super that. stressful. It's like, yeah. Right. And so it, it's hard because yeah, you, that you, sounds like a nightmare. Well, it's every show is like that. Not that. Not that I'm like, you know, right. You know, it's not like I get on stage and I'm and I'm like sick to my stomach. It's just that's the only right. part of it that I get stressed out about. Really, is the technical aspect of it. Right. Um, just making sure that the gear is all good because, like, you remember our in ear monitor setup, and it is a fucking yeah. nightmare back there. It is like yeah, it looks like Skynet. It's it's like <laughs> it's like Skynet. But like as if the developers of Skynet started in like a college dorm room and they're like, let's just right. get all the <laughs> random bullshit that we can together to try it out. And that's what yeah. it looks. It's all like, you know, covered in tape and it's like half held together with like different types of screws. And some of the, some of the things you have to like press twice to make them work. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, right. Uh, yeah. That's, that's, that's scary. Well, you, you guys yeah. have the, the, the um, wireless setup so it's like and you have to like have like different frequencies in like different spots and like well i'll tell you one thing i'll tell you one thing and this is um this was a source of stress for ollie for uh our vocalist ollie for quite a while because he for the last four years has been 
stressed about how his in-ears don't sound right. And, and I'll plug right. into his in-ears, and I'll be like, I don't know if I really hear it. I'll switch to his channel. I'll be like, I don't know. And, he'll, and he would spend, you know, minutes between songs sometimes changing stuff on his in-ears, trying to tweak stuff right. right. And um, it turned out four years later that he just didn't know how to sync his pack to the, um, <laughs> to the, to the transmitter. Right. And, and it was like a one-button thing. It was like something that that we just none of us had really talked to him about, and it was yeah. just like, I mean, like, it, so so there's that aspect of it where it's like, yeah, everybody has different frequencies, but it's like, it's also just like so many levels of like, One okay, thing. yeah, it's like we have a mixer there, and we all have to do like we run it ourselves, you know what I mean? Like, right, we don't have a stage guy there with us. I mean, I am the stage guy for the most part. I'm troubleshooting while we're there. And there's right. MIDI and there's fucking, you know, three axe effects or whatever and a full mixer and yeah. like DI boxes and splits. And, and then, you know, we have awesome sound guys, but, but yeah, the technical stuff is really like, that's my, that's my biggest, uh, my biggest source of anxiety. Um, yeah, that, yeah we got Eric. Usually, usually Mike's job, uh, <laughs> not yeah. job, but no. yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, no, Hey, delegate it to somebody he else. Handles, I mean, handles you know. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Eric G, we got a super chat, ten dollars. Thank you so much, buddy. Um, let's answer a couple questions here. Um, we got uh, Hugh. Oh, hey, we got Hugh from Quebec. Uh, dude, this come and seeing us a lot of shows. Uh, maybe even a show that we played. Malcolm, uh, just stopping by and saying hi. What's up, Hugh? Um, uh, dog. Yeah, dog. What's up? Um, our Spartan ear monitors run on hopes and dreams. That's true. Um, <laughs> Uh, Ollie is still on a quest to see a triangle pit. That's true. Ollie oftentimes asks for different shapes of pits while we're playing live. Right. Um, yeah. Hey, speaking of playing live, <laughs> what's your what's your next uh, thing as a band? What are you guys doing? Uh, we're going out with uh, Black Crown Initiate and Archaic. Uh, That's the a end US, of September. US tour. Yeah, yeah. US oh, tour. Great. Then uh, after sweet. after that, we don't have anything until um, January of uh, 2022 with Decapitated. Which is very cool. Sick. Yeah. Yeah, and that'd you, be really cool. You've been a fan of theirs for quite a while. Long time. <clears throat> I'm not asking. Long I'm time telling. fan. <clears throat> no, you're telling me. Yeah. <laughs> you are a fan. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we did our first European tour with them in 2011, and that was uh, right. uh, that was an experience, man. That was, uh, that was amazing. Because you give, uh, you know, you... you I mean, I, I, I listened to Decapitated since I was, like, 16 years old, and then I'm on tour right. with them when I was 22, you know? Yeah, that's And crazy. it's just, like, you know, and and for you now, uh, you know, you and I are both older now, and you've probably been listening to them for probably just as long, and, you know. Exactly. And you're going to be backstage yeah. hanging out with uh, with a band that you've listened to for so many years. It's, like, it's fucking that's weird. It's going to be sick. It's fucking weird how sick. that shit happens. It's pretty cool. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, Ethan Andrew says, see you boys in Chicago. I won't be there, but you will be there. Yeah. Um, are, Chicago's always lit, man. Yeah. Are you guys playing Reggie's? Uh, I, I don't know. Probably. That's the venue you get shot at. The venue. Yeah. Everybody gets <laughs> shot there or stabbed. <laughs> shot or stabbed. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. the best venue. Yeah. That's I, the only one we played there, I think. I, I think I think the same thing with us. Somebody did get s that stabbed or shot like directly out like outside of the door of the venue one night while we were playing our set. I don't remember if you were there. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, and that was also the show that we played where uh, we got there and we were playing the side room and um, and we had to sound check in front of like a dozen families eating dinner at like oh, yeah, 5 no. p.m. No, or whatever. Yeah. And they did not was... want us there. <laughs> they didn't care. They were mm. like, why is this a thing? No. What is they, this? They were not paying uh, guests of the metal show. They were just unsuspecting yeah. family. Um, the last the last time we were there with you guys was uh, like Tony McAlpine was playing over there. Right. Did yeah. you get to see him? Uh, no, I was, uh, I don't know, doing something else. <laughs> was that the night that we saw? Uh, no, that wasn't. Was that when we were watching Game of Thrones? No. No, no, that no. was uh, in Normal. Louisiana, I think. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There was yeah, some. Yeah. Uh, it was a some good food that night. There was some great food that night. <laughs> it, was it was like great. mind-bending 
awesome food. Oh man, the food, let me tell you about the food at that show. Yeah, yeah oh yeah. my God. Uh, okay, so let's see what else somebody's saying here. Uh, Merely Passing Through is gonna see that tour on October 9th. Uh, nice. Very good. Um, free Fly Big Sky, is there a band that you'd be intimidated to tour with? What do you think? Um, Decapitated? <laughs> No, nah, it'd have to be like a band that I, uh, I don't know, man. At this point, like, as long as they're not an asshole, I don't care. You right. Know? Right. I think, I think, I think all the other stuff is just kind of like dead mm -hmm. uh, to me in my brain. But if, if, if they're cool dudes, then it's all good. And I'm not in intimidated by it, but if they're an asshole and I'm not intimidated by it, but it's like, now I got to fucking, I got to gotta play by these garbage rules you know right yeah there and there are some sort of weird. there are some sort of unspoken rules when it comes to touring with bands right which is yeah i mean it doesn't it doesn't just come with the you don't get the tour offer go on the tour and they say oh by the way when you're touring right. with this band here's a list of things you shouldn't shouldn't do you know what i mean like right. that would be very right. helpful right <laughs> yeah you got to um, find out the hard way sometimes yeah um so, yeah, it's like don't load your gear on before the headliner band is done sound checking. Don't oh, that, don't eat the food yeah. before the headliner band gets there to eat the, the get in food or the whatever. There, there's like a lot of you know, and and it's not necessarily like some of them are kind of nonsensical. It's like you know we're all on right. the tour together, and it really does depend on the headliner band. Um, right. But yeah, some of those things are are little, but um, but yeah. man, they really add up, and all of a sudden you can create a weird environment in the bus. Or on the tour generally, uh, yeah, just by not following some that. stuff. Yeah, yeah, it sucks so. after that. Um, I've never had any personally like real bad experiences, but I've had we've had some like members of some other bands ends. bullying, you know, doing a bit of like kind of weird shit. It's like, yeah, but other than right. that, everybody's been pretty chill. Yeah, if it's like one guy, you can just like, yeah, you know, ignore it, like, yeah. you know, be, just be somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. You know? But it's if it's amazing. like a whole band and their crew yeah. and like, yeah, you know, the tour manager, you know, then it's like, uh, it's amazing I, how okay. easily you can uh, you can hide from one other person while you're on tour. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. You can never see him again. Yeah. You know, he's an asshole once, and you'll just never see him. Yeah, again. yeah, just disappear. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see what else. Uh, oh, we're listening to Discreet right now. Oh yeah. The yeah. This is a very sick band. This is like. Toby once the other guitar player of my band, Arch Spire, my band, uh, he said, yeah. <laughs> "This is the perfect tech death band." I think is what he said. Wow, that's um, it's high praise coming from Toby. Who I mean, I kid you not, dude. We'll be on tour, and on tour you are listening to blasting death metal uh, right. every single day, and you'll right. see him in the bus or in the van, and he'll have headphones on. He'll be blasting death metal. It is That's crazy. Sick. I mean, it's sick. <laughs> yeah, That's sick. I I'm not um, like that. I'll uh I'll I'll jam some uh some death metal and some black metal and stuff. But sometimes I'll need some like uh like in the morning I'll jam like uh, movie scores or something like that or like some some synth wave or something. Who are some of your to favorite it, uh, you know? movie composers? Um, you put me on the spot. Uh, I can't remember their names most of the time. What a uh, the guy who did fraud. The, the Penny what a Dreadful fraud. soundtrack. Jeez, can't you know, even I remember I, that. I, I can't. <laughs> Dude, there's like, I, I think I, I think I know two bands that like I grew up listening to, and I know like all their members. I think there's. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I think the guy's name is. Um, I don't fucking know. Yeah. Abel Lewandowski. I don't know. Whoa. He's he's sick. he did that the the Penny Dreadful soundtrack. I okay. think it's on Spotify. It's really it's really epic. Okay. I was like a you know Danny Elfman obviously. Amazing. Um, I need to check out Hans Zimmer more. He mm -hmm. never really grasped me, uh, grabbed me too much, but uh, you know I hear good things obviously. Um, um yeah. Yeah, kinda... yeah. Yeah. He's great. He's he's kind of like the guy that I put on. I actually listen to Hans Zimmer pretty much every day this week. I just been listening to because he just came out with that. <clears throat> just came up with that um those two new tracks from the upcoming dune movie oh okay yeah and nice. um so so the the director of that movie uh denise and i always fuck up his last name Villeneuve. i don't fucking know i'm not french canadian i don't know how to say his name Denise. Yeah. dennis whatever yeah, yeah, um so he was using a composer named johan johansson 
And that guy did Arrival, and he did Sicario. Okay. And both of those movies have nice. amazing soundtracks. He also did a couple other movies, but that guy passed away in 2017 or 2018, as far as I remember. Oh, so, um, so Blade Runner, uh, the new Blade Runner was, uh, the music was done Hans Zimmer, I think. I could be wrong. Um, and then he's doing the new Dune movie. I mean, Hans Zimmer, you know, if you listen, because Guthrie Govan plays with Hans Zimmer as well. Oh, what? Yeah, he's like his live guitarist, at least in the live stuff that you have on. Like, if you go to Spotify right. and check out Hans Zimmer live, you'll hear Guth- yeah. Guthrie all over the place, you know? That's crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah, right. yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. I've got some homework. Yeah. Well, the cool do. thing about, well, I, I've listened to a couple of things from Guthrie talking about that. Maybe it was an article I read or something. Um, he said that the f- the position that he takes in that band is not of a virtuosic guitarist. It's right. Of he's just like, jamming. Yeah, it's like it's like part of the orchestra. You know, he's like he's like all right. I am is I'm I'm a part of Hans Zimmer's vision. I'm like, that's man, it. that's fucking cool, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would be pretty fucking sick, honestly. I mean, he's one of the best. Yeah, has like literally one of the best guitar players ever. Just like play chords and shit. Yeah, well, he plays That's chords it. and he does like some atmospheric lead stuff, and maybe he does like right, right. he but might like, use like an know, e-bow the, or something. That's how like all the the big acts are. You know, like they have literally the best guys in the world, and like right. you don't need to be shredding. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You just know that you have the best guy, and and you're good. Are you um, you're you're uh, you're getting long in the tooth. Uh, is that correct? Is that correct to say? Long in the tooth. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's leave it at that. Uh, Despise Icon 90, 1982. Wait, who are they listening to? Uh, we're listening to a Lothering Re- Requiem right now from, uh, well, this is one of Malcolm's bands. And he's got so many bands. Oh, so many bands. Um, um, you know, I'm not really, you know, yeah. Just, you know. You're not picky. You just put up. Yeah, I'm not picky. You're not you know, picky. I just someone asks me and I'll just do it. You know. Yeah, you're don't long in the tooth. Okay, do. I don't know what to say. You're getting long <laughs> in the tooth. You're not picky. These things go hand in hand. <laughs> what I was going to ask you, my question was, um, as you get older, do you find yourself less and less attracted to playing the fastest uh, guitar possible, or um, more attracted to it, or um, or just friends um, with it? What, what do you find? I'm more attracted to balance. Right. Um, more attracted to like uh, the contrast of highly dynamic guitar parts and heavy parts. Right. Um, you know, uh, I'm not really. I know I'm not going to be like the best guitar player in the world. So like. And when did you I, realize I, that? Fifteen years ago. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, I had aspirations to be a good guitar player, a hey, guitar player. Dude. But like you know. Yeah. I know what you mean. I'm not joking. I mean, at one yeah. point, you go... He's like, I'm going to be the best guitar player the world's ever been. Yeah, dude. Yeah. You got to have then, that. Right. And but then, you know, matter. you're just like, that goes away. It, you know, I, it yeah. was probably less than 15 years ago. Right. Because, uh, you know, my ego is... Uh, it's been dead for a long time, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> more recently than ever. Uh, so... Yeah, the the balance I think is uh, super important, especially right. like, you know, the more albums that I'm a part of that come out, and um, you know, a lot of them are, are vastly different depending on which band. There's you know, different characteristics and all that stuff. And right, man, like, even like on our new album, I think we uh, really try to strive for a balanced sound. Mm-hmm. Um, like some of the it has some of the the hardest most technical stuff we've ever played in any of our discography yeah uh, but at the same time it has some of the most simplistic heavy stuff in our discography as well right um so i, I like that i yeah. like keeping it you know good gradient yeah i i think i think that i eh, it, it's, it's tough to say because like the band that i play in the whole gimmick is let's play as fast as we possibly can right uh, Peahan Shih Tzu says, my ego has been dead a long time. Needs to be on a T-shirt. Um, <laughs> but the whole, I agree. yeah, the whole gimmick is like play as fast as possible and all that kind. Of, and and that is still the goal, and that's still right. super sick. Um, but yeah, I mean, like the older the older that I get as well, like I I do feel like a balance is like really important. Um, right. But that balance doesn't mean 
the crazy stuff became becomes less crazy. You know no, what I mean? Doesn't. Like, let's make that stu- crazy stuff crazier. You know what I mean? Right. Let's, let's do yeah, you it. slow it down more. You can add more notes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it gets like worse. Yeah, or or you like speed it. You speed the entire thing up, and it's just like the the absolute endurance of the whole thing is part of the the technicality right. and the you know. Uh, it, it, like you can, I think our Spotify list has stopped. Let me just re up, and we're gonna listen to that Mesmer Core again. Very good. <laughs> um, the uh, yeah, like the ba- finding that balance is uh, it's it's a fun endeavor. You know what I mean? Like it's right. really fun when you're younger because you because you and I probably had the same kind of like hey, let's go out on stage and just impress the shit out of everybody. Let's play as right. tight and fast as possible. And oh, now dude. it's like, let's make something that sticks in somebody's brain. And that's yeah. that's the goal. Right. Yeah. When I first started doing this shit, however long ago that was, the goal was like, I want someone to like never be able to figure this out by ear. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, so you you would do something that's, that's very... But, but like, I never... That was the, the, the intent, but, like, the first thing that always mattered with writing riffs was, like, m- melody. Right. So it was always, like, the melody has to be there, and then, like, how can we, like, um, build on top of that to where, like, no one can play it? Because at that time, I was like, well, I want to be the best guitar player ever, so I got to, like, write, you know. Right. You know, and then once that faded, you know, um, it's just like a learning process. You, you evolve, and it's like, well, I've, how many times can you do that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Before, mm-hmm. like, you get bored of it, or you start writing riffs that you already wrote that you forgot about. Dude. You know what I mean? Dude. Yeah. <laughs> just got to start. Speaking of which, uh, I got this uh, I got this device called a trimmery. Okay. And that trims your, what does that do? It's like a, I'll show you. Okay. Well, just hold on. Uh, is it YouTube safe? Say what? Yeah, what? yeah. Oh, it's uh, not going to uh, trim anything. That what? No, it's, what a, it's like a tremolo and then memory. Oh, so trim. Trim. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I thought this was like a Manscaped commercial or something like that. Oh no, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm gonna whip out my balls. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hey, the viewership would probably go up for you know. For sure. Well, Dude, we I just bet- saw Malcolm's balls. Actually, on Dean's- I, I think the viewership actually go down. Sorry to say that. Now I realize that's probably not true. I bet you everybody would click yeah. like off. You know, we get it canceled for sure. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, yeah, um, absolutely. But uh, this device is uh, it's pretty sick. It um, you can put it on your Floyd Rose, and it's basically like a like a a boneless Evertune. You know what I mean? So like you can yeah like uh, <laughs> you can like go into a drop tune Evertune, right? Okay. <laughs> You can go down to a drop tuning with uh, Floyd Rose, and you're like, you're good to go. Right. Uh, okay. And uh, so I've been messing with that and uh, like writing new riffs and like uh, drop tuning and stuff. Oh yeah. Because uh, Mike and I talked about getting seven strings a while back ago, and yeah. we're always back and forth, and we're not going to do it, I guess. So. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like a tool to like be able to like play in a, a lower register. Right. And and still, because the thing is, it's like. We get seven strings, then we have to like, what are we tuned to? I mean, mm-hmm. we're already tuned to C standard. We get a seven string; it's going to be hell of crazy low. Right. And then, you know, it's going to be weird to like convert to playing those songs. Sure. Uh, yeah, you don't want to relearn you know. your entire discography just to suit a couple new songs. Right. So, yeah. I think that's the solution. But you know, is I wrote like a, a good chunk of a song in a in a drop tuning over the last couple of days and I'm pretty pretty stoked about it. What what does it look like? Is it like fit into the back of the guitar? Yeah, it, it's like a it's like one of the springs. I don't know if you can. Oh yeah. That little thing right there. Oh so yeah. Like right in between the springs, you uh just set it up and like tighten this up when you're all set up and then you're good to go. It, you know, it's, it's pretty dope. Oh, did you get it like o- online or something like that? Yeah, I uh I, I just uh got it online. Um I Googled it and then found it. Uh, <laughs> is it like something that you like, you already no, um, knew about and then you like looked it up no, and you um, just like found it? Yeah, like Ola. I, I found it on Ola's channel. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, he he uh, did a video on it and I was like, man, that's that's kind of sick. I, it's like right when the first, when that video came out, it was like a year or so ago, maybe mm-hmm. two years. And, um, uh, what, I've got was, uh, somebody in the chat asking, uh, what was it called? What is it called again? Trimmery. It's like a... Um, T 
R E M O R Y or something like that. Okay. Maybe two M's. And it's like it's it's like their own company that makes it. It's not like a yeah. They're like a German company. company. Oh okay. Um yeah. Trimmer. Yeah, that, trimmery. Yeah, it's like a tremolo and memory at the same. Put oh. them together. Right. And you got ta da because it holds the bridge in place. It's genius. That sounds cool. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so it's a cool upgrade for anybody looking. So you, like you can like bend the strings and like the other notes won't go out of tune. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm okay. I sir, I, it's been a long time since I played a Floyd, um, right. so I'm trying to imagine how it works. But seeing it on the back of your guitar and what you just said kind of made sense. But um, right. and you can still use the whammy bar too. It's a little like stiffer, but uh, it, it works. It's it's awesome. Oh yeah. I just got it like like maybe three four days ago. Oh sweet. And so that's yeah. going on I, because you guys uh, you guys were in the studio. Uh, your band In Fury was just in the studio. How many months ago? Um, almost a year ago. Oh my God! Really? Yeah. Wow. Almost a yeah. year ago. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I guess doing the EP, we were in the studio twice. So like, sure. We were, you know, we did it the EP studio thing about, you know, about now. Mm. Okay. A year ago. And well, then again, again. Yeah. It, about a year if ago. that doesn't make anybody in the chat or anybody watching this feel bad about how much how much music you output, um, I know it makes me <laughs> f- makes me feel bad because we were writing our album that's a, that will come out at some point, sometime right. this year. Um, right. It took us about two and a half years to write that and write and record it. And yeah. um, as of now, we have zero new music. We have nothing else. That is <laughs> it. That is a hundred percent of our ideas. All there it is, right? So yeah. um, now. Um, now you already have more songs written. You recorded yeah. two albums in 2020. Yeah, give or take. I mean, yeah, the the EP is like four songs with like a instrumental thing, right? And the, and then the, the new album. And then you have new songs written past that. Yeah. You're fucking crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. I just, I, I just like writing. Like the guys in our chat are probably like annoyed as fuck. I send them stuff. I'm like, dude, we. we <laughs> We're still <laughs> we're still doing the thing <laughs> with this thing that just came out, and I'm like sending shit. I'm like, sorry guys, you know. Daddy, just... Daddy Kane in the chat says Malcolm is built different. <laughs> I would agree to that. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, um, it wasn't necessarily a compliment, but um, y- your brain is different than other people's brains because I know that writing for for my band is a tooth pulling experience. It is a frustrating, um, right. Um, it's, it's a test of your sanity. Um, and, uh, and I find it very difficult, but very fulfilling. And I, I feel very confident, um, in the new material that we wrote and I can't wait for people to hear it, but I'm not, I don't have anything else. Like I don't, (laughs) I'm not, I'm not past that, right? You know, I'm still going back and learning the stuff that's going to come out that nobody has heard um, right. yet. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm sure that you are too. Yeah, I, I am uh, currently learning our, our new set, which we're going to play like a lot of new songs. Right. Um, Great. And uh, yeah, it's like, this is like, like the first tour that we're going on. We're like, we're going to play songs that like everybody in the band has been a part of the band when the songs are being written. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. So that, that's cool. Um, wow. Uh, but yeah, um, dude, I just like writing stuff like that. Really? I'm addicted to it, I think. Really? I, no matter if it's good or bad, I just like whenever an idea happens, I just like have to put the time in mm-hmm. um, and then like flesh it out. And if it sucks, it sucks, you know? But like, I just have to like get it down on paper while I'm like inspired. Otherwise, to, like, what, what's the point? You know? do, you, do you actually use paper? No, no. I just uh, so you're paper a liar. is so paper is logic pro. You're X. lying. <laughs> so uh, you're you're a li- you're a lying composer. No, the uh, yeah. so the, the process you have is, and you and I had talked about this a few months back, and we're still kind of kind of off and on talking about it a little bit. Doing a project where we go through the writing process. Yeah. And. Um, and I'm I'm still really excited about that idea, um, but we, we just both need to find the time to kind of like make it happen. But it's like, For it's sure. a cool thing because you and I write both very differently. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's probably quite a bit of similarities in there, but you 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 um, as far as I can tell, you use a lot more programming of drums, and you do a lot more. 
you maybe fully flesh out the idea, whereas I just have like, you know, demoed guitars and then I tweak it from there and then I, you know, and then I bring it to the group, you know. Yeah, I I, I go all out with, with the the demos just because um, for me it's more inspiring to have like like really sick sounding like drum samples and like guitar yes. tones and and all this other stuff um, like when you're in the process like I can just hit my keyboard and then like you know the the cellos are ripping and all that stuff I just have everything right there I could just like use right um, for inspiration right right at the moment right. Um, yeah, and it helps me. Uh, I used to before I even had a doll. I had to like remember all the riffs. And, right, uh, that's frustrating. I can't even imagine doing that anymore. Mm -hmm. I can just like write it and then tab it out if mm -hmm. I have time and forget about it. And then whenever I, I come back to the idea, it's like oh, just pull up the tabs. That's where we left off. Right. Boom. You know. Yeah. It's awesome. I it, it, I I think also like. Uh, we have a couple super chats here. Donald Hetrick, uh, Malcolm, you new release is brutal. Please keep it up. I also got the Infury Facebook fan, uh, page uh, fan badge from Donald oh, yeah, Hetrick. Thanks, and then dude. Gunstar1, uh, I'm back. Necrophagus rules. Tell your wife I'm addicted to Bach. I don't know whose wife he's talking about. Maybe mine. Uh, <laughs> keep up the great work. Come back to Seattle and play El Corazon show. I didn't get my refund on the tickets. El Corazon. Oh, okay. Yeah, we will. Um, <clears throat> uh, so I was going to say that back when uh thanks guys for the super chats back when uh my band was first writing stuff was back in 2009 2010 yeah. and we did the same thing we just remembered everything right and that's craziness that's it is what, <laughs> i mean dude i mean you go yeah. i don't know if you've done this but i've done that i i did this uh maybe last year uh Maybe two years ago, actually. Oh, my God. We lost a fucking year and a half. Maybe three or four years ago now. Um, right. Went through the stems of one song off of our first album. And I'm like, there's straight up like 10 wrong notes in here. Like, yeah. there's, <laughs> it, like what were we doing? Like, what the? Dude, that's the thing, man. Like, back, back around that time, 2009, 2010, uh, I think it was like 2008 when I was like really like doing the discrete stuff. Like, we were playing shows and on tour. Mm -hmm. Um, I still had to like know all the inferior stuff because I was still in the band at that moment, but I was still in discreet. So I had to, we were like playing shows and I would come home, play shows with inferior wow. and then like have to know all of the stuff. And one day we played a show when I got back in town and we didn't practice inferior songs. <laughs> and I was like, it's fine, dude. We just play it. You know, we've done it. <laughs> we've done it. And I forgot every solo in the set. Oh my God every single like on the spot forgot oh. i'll do all the riffs but then all, the solos i was just oh. it was now the thing about it, that was probably the worst moment of my life on stage oh my god was, was that show jeez yeah. that sounds like a nightmare yeah and you think you're badass and the solo comes up and you just <laughs> oh <no. laughs> you can't even fucking pretend jeez. you know what i mean you're like what is the this i can't even remember the first lick you know yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Well, I, 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 talked about, I talked about this. I don't remember to whom, but recently where you're sort of like um, <clears throat> being on stage. Sometimes you have to stand on sort of this knife's edge of, am I going to remember how to play the next thing or not? Right. And, and you cannot overthink it because if you do, you play it wrong. You're done. You're done. So, it be, be, and be, you know, um, the, the the thing that I usually get <clears throat> compliments for is because I play and then I, I talk to people on the chat generally whenever I'm playing Archbar songs on live stream. And I find that very fun because it sort of like detaches my brain from the song a little bit. And it, you know, makes it a little bit different. It's kind of challenging. It's kind of fun. Right. Um, but the only reason why I can do that is muscle memory. Um, I'm not thinking about the riffs before I play them. Because if I did, I wouldn't be able to play them. I would fuck them all yeah. up. Yeah. Right. So keeping my brain occupied is sort of like, in a lot of ways, it's like a kind of like a crutch. Like, no, I kind of have to do that because if I'm overthinking it and just being silent, I'm just going to be like, uh, what is yeah, this? Yeah, what's solo? the next part? What is it? What fret does it start on? Is it 10? It's like, oh, it's nine. <laughs> Once those thoughts come in, that's yeah. when panic happens. Yeah. Well, okay. They, you're right. That is when the panic can happen. But right. I think that you and I are probably both at the same kind of spot yeah. where when you feel that panic coming you can like sink back into the comfort of like 
Right. Well, I didn't fuck it up last night, and I didn't fuck yeah, it up fine. the night before, and, and it's fine, you know. Right. But, man, you can let that stuff envelop you. You can yeah. let it, like, you're playing on stage. Let's say there's 500 people standing in front of you listening to your band or whatever, and you're like, one night, you're like, I don't remember what this riff is, and you fuck it up. Yeah. You go, okay, that's all good. Tomorrow, whatever. Yeah. You go on stage tomorrow, the next night. You think about it, and it's, like, compounded. And you're like, okay, yeah. no, I really don't know, and you fuck it up. And then the third <laughs> night, you're in your own head. You're dreading going on stage. Yeah. And you can't let that happen. Yeah, it's like the spirit of dead fucking riffs haunting you. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> like, they just come back stronger and stronger. Dude. Oh, yeah. my God. That's fucking funny. Yeah, you just can't overthink it. It's weird. It's weird how yeah. the brain works, yeah. dude. Yeah, you have to fucking you have to be in the moment and just let it go. And, you know... The thing that you're doing uh, in your live streams where you're just, like, talking and yeah. reading and yeah. stuff, that is kind of, like, a whole new level. I'll, I'll have to, like, try that or something because, like, yeah. that would help, like, doing vocals and playing guitar. Um, I don't... Uh, in might, my brain. You might be right, but there's a difference between singing something and coming up with conversational sort of just stuff. Oh, maybe, yeah. Because I can't... I mean, I can. I, I'm not a good singer, and I don't practice. So I, if I tried to sing, I would fuck it up. But if I just practiced, let's say if I was, I got to play a fucking some weird show where I have to sing. It's like, okay, well, I will just practice it over and over again. And practicing right. the singing and the guitar riffs together, they link. Then they're locked in. Yeah. You know, and they kind of Conversation's become, more like on the spot. Yeah. Conversation is like off the top. Right. So it's like, it's, it comes from a different part of your brain, right? Because your point. vocals yeah. can be muscle memory as well. Uh, that right. isn't to say that it's harder because, like, if you have the muscle memory down for your hands, then there is a part of your brain that's freed up that you can just, like, right. I'm going to allocate that part to looking at this or whatever, thinking that yeah. I'm fucking, you know, cool doing it. Or but. Yeah, like, doing vocals uh, and playing guitar used to be a real task for me. It's, it's gotten better over the years. Right. The more doing it and stuff like that and, like, uh, the more, like, anticipating that you have to do it and, like, kind of, like, you know, that kind of, it starts to just become a thing that you can do. Yeah, uh, I, I could see that. Yeah, it's just um, it's another muscle to work out. Yeah, <clears throat> um, we got a couple a couple of super chats. Gunstar one says I was talking about a Dean's wife. Yes, uh, my wife loves <laughs> Bach, uh, and so do I. Uh, JC is Eldritch Evolution or Spellbound going to be on play on tour or see you all in Chicago? Uh, I'm not sure if the other guys want to want me to unleash the set, but uh, I'll say. One of those songs will be played. Right. All right. Great. That. At least. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe yeah, you we, don't we know. won't play it now. I don't know. Uh, let's answer a couple questions here. Um, what do you guys think about seven string trying C standard with a high F? C, F, A sharp, D sharp, G, C, F. That would be some really, really high high notes. I have no opinion. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I guess it, w it wouldn't be that. It would be like, what, one uh, one step up from standard? Um, from standard seven, step. yeah, uh, that sounds like it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, no, uh, yeah, G and C. Yeah, I guess so. Like yeah. the high string. Yeah. Being F. Yeah, I don't know. It, it seems. Uh, I don't, I'm not totally sure why you would do it. Um, but yeah, I don't really have. I play an eight string, so meh, whatever. Um, let's see. It's kind of like Andrew's bass. He plays a five string, but his low strings a C. So he's like he's one one. Uh, half step higher oh really yeah and is that tough so to like, look at him playing and then look at yourself playing no i, I don't care about what he does <laughs> <laughs> his hair is going in a circle that's all i care about dude. right right do the windmill um play the notes brian h asks <laughs> do you guys use guitar pro to jot down all ideas as they get formed uh yeah not all the time okay sometimes i hate myself when i don't because now i have to stop what I'm doing and then like use a skill of like figuring something out. Right. Um, what, I would rather just uh, pull up the tab and be like, that's the, the thing. Um, but sometimes that, that can really break up the, the workflow. Yeah. Um, so yeah, unless uh, you're really, really fast at it, like right. really fast. And all you're doing is one guitar part and you're just doing it for reference. You're just like, yeah, I have one melody. I'm not writing down harmonies here. I'm not using it as a compositional tool. I'm just like, let me just get this like uh, honestly vi doing a video of it is is kind of what um it's what toby has done i've also done that just doing a quick right. cell phone video that shit is like replaces guitar yeah that's, that's pretty part. good yeah yeah um but yeah usually like the next day if i didn't 
if I didn't tap it out, I'll c try to come in the next day when like um, I'm not in that state of, of the flow state. Right. Just get it down so I don't forget it since my brain still knows what it is. Yeah. And then move on. Yeah. But yeah, it's just, and you should do that anyway, especially like sure. you know if uh, your guitar player or your bass player you know decides to like go to hair school or some shit. And then you need to like replace them. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just have them tabbed out. You know, have your stuff tabbed yeah, out. Yeah, right. Um, it's good practice. Okay, uh, Free Fly Big Sky says, Do you ever feel the need to release songs that you're not as stoked about in order to have enough mater material for an album? Uh, What's that? Well, the question is basically Do you ever release subpar music just to fill out an album's runtime? Oh, no. Uh, the goal is to overwrite and then condense of down course. into enough for an album. Of course. Uh, because then at that point you have more to choose from and and, uh, and then you're not like forcing yourself to like use the thing. Right. You can be like, well, instead of this, you know, we can use that one or, or this one. And then, and then now you have the, the absolute best filtration. The, uh, the filtration, yeah. The, um, the, the stance that we take on it is... Um, and we did this writing the newest album that's going to come out is uh, we were like, let's write X number of songs. And if we can finish that before this date, then we'll try to write another one to fill out the runtime. Um, not to say it's a lesser song, but we'll have a lot less time to work on it than all the rest of them. And we did finish all seven, six or eight or whatever song, however many songs it was before the, the deadline. And then we uh, we did write that extra song and I think it turned out great um, but it was a tough one to fucking write and uh, I wonder if anybody's going to be able to detect that on the album it's different and it uh, it has a riff in it that I wrote two years ago that we called the cursed riff because we couldn't fit it in anywhere we fucking tried for <laughs> months and we would have it in a song yeah. and then we'd take it out. And then two months would go by, we'd bring it back. Oh, let's put the cursed riff in here. Put it in. No, it doesn't work at this tempo. Take it out. Um, uh, dude, yeah. it's just like, that's a frustrating thing because all of us really liked the riff. But, yeah. you know, eventually yeah, it did go in. It fit in that part. But, right. you know, it was a tough one. It takes forever sometimes. Yeah. Uh, actually, I think the song playing in the background mike and i that was supposed to go on our 2014 album right and uh we just couldn't get it to work and then right. we tried it for revenant couldn't get it to work yeah and then um you know it's always been there and is like, that frustrating you know, i think yeah like at least at least 20 different versions of that song wow dude yeah that is fucking yeah. craziness um, okay, we'll answer a few more questions, and then we're going to do a giveaway. I hope that it works. I have um, a way to do it, and I was trying to do it before you jumped on this uh, Zoom call. Uh, I tried for four minutes, and it and it uh, absolutely didn't work. So I'm going to hope. Hopefully, <laughs> I'm going to be able to do it. Uh, trying to pick somebody in the chat at random to give away a not to give them away. I'm not going to give Don't somebody give in the away. chat. I mean, yeah, who's going to take them? Who's, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get some money I mean. if I'm going to get rid of somebody <laughs> here um so we're gonna sell people in the chat no the uh we're gonna do a digital download from sheet happens publishing and uh, i'm gonna hopefully make that as even and as fair as possible using um a website that i have queued up ready to go and it probably won't work so i'll probably just pick somebody at random <laughs> but we'll figure that out in a second uh death metal greg says at this stage in your careers what do you find most challenging the technical aspects or songwriting uh, for me, uh, I mean, what? I, I wish I knew what kind of technical aspects, because um, mm. I'm not like uh, like the songwriting. Uh, that's challenging in its own to like try to stay fresh, you right? Know? Like with your song, with your band, like trying not to like paint yourself into a corner in any way. Sure. Um, uh, as far as like technique and stuff, I don't think that's a thing. But like, um, maybe like gear. And like, I don't keep up with like learning new things. Right. Like gear and like what's like my Axe Effects is like I, I turn it on mm -hmm. and I and I switch the thing and it's on and that's all like that's all I got, dude. Yep. Like, same, same I here. can't navigate that thing without a laptop and the thing. Right. Um. So 
If it's fucked, then I'm dying on stage. Right. And, uh, <laughs> just gonna die. Um, Fair I, enough. Mike and I like literally uh, talked about going back to like you know just regular ass fucking amps. No way. But, like I don't want. I don't want to do it. <laughs> but like uh, that's how you know. It's it's a hassle. Yeah. But, yeah maybe just the, the technical gear stuff. You know. That you find that more challenging than songwriting. Yeah. I would say that um, you were right uh, um, about trying to keep it fresh, and honestly, the songwriting falls into that. So just not being, just put, not putting out like just derivative uh, of right. your own band from two albums ago, yeah. which right. is frustrating when you write a riff and you go two jams in and you're like everybody's stoked and then one dude's like isn't this kind of like that other song and you're like ah shit no! it is yeah. and then yeah. the whole mood goes down and potentially that jam yeah. is uh, is pretty much null it's over. at that point yeah yeah um so that's tough i think the problem is when you put out when you put out multiple albums it's just uh it's tough not to do it, and I think that's why our albums keep taking longer and longer to write. And I'm sure that I don't know if you find that that same kind of problem. Um, but Mike's uh, pretty yeah. good at calling it out, um, right? Like he like like sometimes because I don't like to throw away riffs, so sometimes I'll go into the the riff bin, mm -hmm. and I'll forget to take it out of the riff bin. Okay, and they'll be like, "Well, that's the riff we we used that riff already." Right. And, I, and I'll be like, "Oh yeah, we did use that riff." Oh, but, I, see. <laughs> I see. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Uh, Without Mike, I'm, I'm lost in, when it comes to that shit. Um, but yeah, keeping it fresh is, is it's hard because, um, like, how fresh can you keep it? You know, well, like, yeah, fresh, fresh, like, you, yeah. you have to balance, like, well, this is what your band has expectations and a sound, mm -hmm. you know, but mm -hmm. then, like, keeping it fresh is, like, you know, the opposite almost. Yep. So it's kind of like a kind of a, a slow mix over time like after a few albums your band maybe shouldn't sound like it did a few albums ago but like you couldn't tell gradually right I think. right um we get we get a super chat from uh, luca remember how beast of nod is your favorite band i didn't i forgot about that um <clears throat> also there's a lot of bands whose gimmick is playing fast as possible it's songwriting that makes archfire stand above the rest ah, take that uh, also, remember Suckers. Beast of Nod? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Luca, for the super chat. Um, yeah, the keeping fresh thing is, is tough. And uh, um, you're right, because you want it. The band should. I mean, hey, let's take a look at Opeth. I mean, right. dude, early, early days, first album till now. I mean, y you would have never guessed that there was. There's that middle point where they just went totally. Yeah, they've gone. They've like swerved all over the place. Right. You yeah. Know? They've, uh, that's a perfect example of keeping it fresh, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, at least the, the middle age, like, uh, right. What I would consider the golden age of Opeth. Blackwater Park. Um, yeah. Like yeah. That, that era. What a sick um, album. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's, uh, that's the goal. That's life goals right there, dude. Right that's that true. shit. Okay. Okay. Let's see if we can do a quick giveaway. A giveaway. You want to stick around for the giveaway? <clears throat> yeah, let's do it. All right. Okay. So I am going to do, I'm going to try, okay, that didn't work. Okay, so I'm going to do random uh, number generator, and we're going to try this, and I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> so Malcolm, if you, uh, if, if you might just witness a crash and burn, I have no idea. I'm gonna I hope so. I'm going to generate a number between 1 and 500. Um, and I am looking for a specific number. Whoever, whoever gets that number first on my end um, gets a digital download from sheetabbinspublishing.com. So uh, 1 to 500. Uh, just start throwing them away. Uh, Coyote says, uh, give away your stash. Uh, give away my mustache. That's an interesting. Oh, God. Okay. Now I'm seeing a lot of numbers. Somebody said 420. <laughs> Uh, well, hopefully we can, oh boy, Malcolm, <laughs> you're witnessing a crashing and burning of this. Oh my, Daddy Kane says, Dean, this is a bad idea. I would agree. <laughs> I would agree. You're right, Daddy Kane. But I have a bot, hopefully, that is going to be checking for this winner. I'm hoping. Nobody's gotten it yet as far as I can see. 
Oh, there's a, another thing checking for it. You don't have to check for it personally. That's cool. Well, that's the plan. Okay, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> as soon as you announce the number, someone's gonna be like, "I fucking did that number yeah, five well, minutes ago." True. Wow, this is just crazy to look at. What was I thinking? Hey. I Someone get it? Somebody got it. Hell yeah. All right. Okay, who, uh, let's see, Robert got it. No, his name is got it, dude. <laughs> oh, no way, dude. <laughs> yeah. Robert got it, got it, dude? <laughs> what? Dude, that's perfect. What are that's the amazing. Okay. Robert got it, got okay. it, dog. Uh, Robert got it. If you can just hit. Uh, hit me with a hey, what's up here on this chat to let me know that you're still here. Yay, Robert got us here. Hey, Robert, please hit me a message on Instagram and I'll get you hooked up. All right. Well, Malcolm, it's been a pleasure, an honor, a privilege, and uh, it's been my duty as a musician to talk to you today. Um, is there anything that you want to promote now that we're nearing the end of this uh, this grand conversation? Uh, when Fury has a new album coming out in uh, September 10th. We dropped a new single uh, about a week ago, five days ago, and we have uh, more stuff on the horizon soon, so go uh, pre-order that, isn't it? Great. Okay, uh, cool. I'll yeah, put a you know, uh, pre-order link in the description of this video as soon as I can remember okay. to do that, which won't be right away. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I'll do my best. Uh, all right, man. Well, it was great to talk to you. Uh, thanks for coming thanks on. For and uh, thanks to everybody who was here uh, hanging out with us. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it. We've got, let me just read out a couple of people. We've got CRC. We've got Lucas uh, Sakina. we got Robert Goddard, the winner, the man of the hour. we got Soul Fight. we got Josh McCurdy, Donald Hetrick. You can't leave this empty. Astral Guitar J. Brookley, 666, something, something. Uh, Whole Store, Daddy Kane with the Zingers, Dan B., uh, Ryan Saunders, Ghost Riff, uh, Zensei 999. So, yeah, you guys have been great. Thanks for hanging out with me uh, and Malcolm. And we will see you next time later. Bye-bye.